What's up, Rooster Nation? Uh, we're back after the new year for another Rooster Nation podcast. Um, so with the uh, new year, I wanted to do a little bit of a reflection podcast and uh, talk about um, something that I think hopefully Rooster Nation will find interesting. Uh, the biggest mistake that I have made since launching Rooster and Lark. Um, you know, I've had a lot of time and I've made a lot of mistakes. Um, that's life. That's the nature of the beast. Um, but I was trying to think back to what do I think is my biggest? Where did I go wrong? Um, and it was in 2017. I want to take you back to it and kind of what happened. So 2016, uh, Whole Foods is still very much um, sort of locally managed, right? I'm able to go into all the Whole Foods in Colorado, pitch my product to the individual store manager or the frozen buyer <coughs> and see if they'd like to carry it. And um, that time... Uh, during that time, we crushed it, right? I was in every Whole Foods in the region. Uh, the ones I couldn't drive to, I had called and I pitched it over the phone and I got it in. Um, there was no really official uh, set, right, in terms of where the product is in the store. So I could go into the store manager. I, I could say, hey, you got five SKUs of these egg white patties. Uh, maybe we could cut that down to three and put Rooster and Lark there, you know, right at eye level. And they'd say, great. Or I'd say, Oh, you know, you guys got this great paleo door and uh, Rooster and Lark would be perfect for the paleo door. It's just vegetables, you know, eggs and bacon are a big paleo food. So we were crushing it, right? All the whole foods, eye level, you know, end caps, paleo door. It was great. And then in 2017, Whole Foods rolled out uh, what they called the frozen pilot program. Um, and basically what that was is that was a departure from the store managed uh, configuration of the set um, to a regional planogram, right? There was no more pitching the store at the individual level. You pitched the regional Whole Foods and they put it on the shelf and wherever they put it, that's where it stayed. And if you walk into the store to improve your shelf position, they're going to say, no, we have to follow the planogram. So that was the big change in 2017, the Whole Foods pilot program. And what happened? I pitched for that category review. I was in all 20 something stores in the Rocky Mountain region. Category review came, the reset came, and they cut me down from 20-something to 11 stores. And um, I was, at the time, I was devastated, right? I felt I'd worked so hard for these stores. It was selling so well, you know, paleo, you know, in the end cap stores, and now I'm cut down. But where did they place me? They put me at eye level. I was in only 11 stores in the Whole Foods Rocky, Whole Foods Rocky Mountain region, store footprint cut down in half. But they planogrammed me at eye level, all three SKUs. Um, and at the time I took it uh, is a bad thing, right? They they cut, they cut slashed my SKUs. I'm upset. Um, and, you know, I spent 2017. Um, I certainly didn't neglect those stores, right? I still continued to demo. Um, but I also felt like <clears throat> I needed more stores, right? You know, King Supers and um, Safeway and Sprouts, they had kind of, <clears throat> you know, passed for the time being. <clears throat> and uh, I just felt that to get my brand to take off, I needed to get into more stores. And I definitely, you know, focused on those stores in 2017, those 11 Whole Foods. But I also spent a lot of time cold calling and pitching other grocery stores uh, around the country. And, you know, I've talked about how in 2018 that paid off, right? We got into three more regions of Whole Foods, National Distribution with Lucky's, Earth Fair. Um, but after that, right, after those 11 stores... The next year, Whole Foods went through the 2018 category review, and they expanded my product line to, again, all full distribution in the Rocky Mountain region, all 20-something stores, but they moved it from eye level down to the bottom shelf, and it remains at the bottom shelf to this day. And um, I wish, I think my biggest mistake in 2017 was that I panicked. I thought I needed more stores. Uh, I went out, you know, frantically looking for more stores when I should have been focusing on those 11 stores with laser freaking focus, right? So that way in 2018, when they did the category review, um, they wouldn't just expand it to all 20 something stores, move it to the bottom shelf. They would have kept it at eye level. And I would have had the data if I, had, you know, wrapped my arms around those 11 stores, where are the products at eye level, where it has good visibility. Um, I think it would have been different because in 2017, I would have spent my time proving out the data. In 2018, they would have expanded it to the region at eye level. And, um, you know, I could have spent 2018, 2019 really driving the velocities in those stores. And um, then I would have kind of my data set um, to go out and raise money and definitively say Rooster and Lark is outselling all these other products. 
Um, and but I didn't do that, right? As I said, I uh, I didn't neglect those stores, but I didn't put all my uh, effort into them like I could have. And I was working on getting into other grocery stores, and um, you know, it just uh, here here I am today. Uh, just started 2020, right? Just four months ago, we got placement in the Whole Foods Mid Atlantic region, and we're at eye level. I have another shot, um, you know, to help to build the brand. Um, behind uh, a retailer that has me in a visible position, right? Because as I've talked about before, in Frozen, um, especially with the Whole Foods, you know, category planogram, um, there are no end caps for small suppliers, right? There are no case stacks. There are no bunkers. Um, it's just your spot on the shelf. And it's much, much, much harder to build the brand from the bottom shelf than it is at eye level. Um, so I have my, op- my you know, second opportunity, Whole Foods Mid-Atlantic, um, to really build the brand and get it to take off. As I mentioned, I'm spending a lot of or, you know, focusing a lot of my efforts in that region um, because the product is so visible. But if I had to do it again, I would spend 2017 um, just going ham on those 11 stores in Whole Foods Rocky Mountain region and not panicking um, that it's not enough stores, right? I wish I had more patience. I wish I stayed calm. Um, But learning to be patient and stay calm in this business is probably in any business is one of the hardest things I've had to learn to do. Um just because things don't move on your timeline, right? You're in the store, category reviews are once a year, retailers, you know, they give you 30 minute meeting if you're lucky to present your items and that's it. Um, So, uh, you know, take that for what it's worth. Um, Those are my reflections to anyone who is listening to this. You know, I would ask yourself, how many stores are you in? Are you in 15? Are you in 20 stores in Colorado? Um, I would stop getting into new accounts and I would start focusing on driving those velocities in those 15 to 20 stores. And if you have 20, 30, 40 stores in Colorado and it's selling really well, uh, I think that's when you go to spins. You try to purchase a small set of data that can demonstrate that your product is outselling your competitors. And now you have some data to go raise money on and put yourself in a um, you know a, a good position to go uh, expand. Um, so... You don't need as many stores as you think, right? My problems today are identical to my problems in 2017 when I had, you know, those 11 whole food stores at eye level and another, um, you know, maybe uh, 40 natural grocers, but natural grocers, you know, very inconsistent. I didn't have a consistent placement at all of them like I did at Whole Foods. So uh, that was my biggest mistake. And my biggest takeaway is um, the only the only thing that matters in this business is did you are your consumers making a repeat purchase of your product, right? That is literally the only thing that matters. The number of stores, I've said it before, it does not mean shit. How many distributors you're in doesn't matter. Um, you know, your top line revenues don't matter if they're artificially inflated by new store openings and they're not based on sell through. Um, so, uh, you know, I learned that lesson over 2018, 2019 struggling to get my velocities up from 400 stores where it's on the bottom shelf. A very, very hard challenge. I have a new opportunity, Whole Foods Mid-Atlantic, and I'm not going to um, lose my cool again. Uh, I'm very focused on that region. If I got problems in other regions, you know, it's on the bottom top shelf. Um, I can't I can't focus as much there just because the customers can't see the product. I can advertise all I want, but when they go into the store, they're not going to see it. Um, so that's all I got, Rooster Nation uh, 2020 Reflections. Um, just wish I'd focus on those 11 whole food stores in 2017, but I learned that lesson and um, that's the most important thing you learn. You do the best you can. You keep fighting and uh, that's what I'm going to do. So Rooster Nation, uh, thanks for checking in and uh, looking forward to uh, a good 2020. And I hope um, this is the year for Rooster and Lark. So um, all my love to you and uh, I'll catch you guys later.